Dr. Andrew Young at St. John's, and we want to take a few moments to discuss the management of a Baker cyst in the setting of total degree replacement. Specifically, what is a Baker cyst? And importantly, what happens to the Baker cyst after total knee replacement? So we'll start out by talking about what it is functionally and what it isn't, how we treat it, and what happens to the Baker cyst. So the first question we're often asked is, what is a Baker cyst? So a Baker cyst is an accumulation of fluid in the back of the knee. So uh, when you're looking at this type of image, a drawing, we can see the femur, we can see the tibia, we can see the ligaments and the muscles. And here we can see the Baker cyst depicted as a collection or a bubble of fluid that is accumulated in the back of the knee. Now this fluid comes from the joint between the femur and the tibia and often comes from injury, but most specifically irritation caused from arthritis. So in arthritis, the cartilage is deficient, the bones grind, the knee gets angry, fluid accumulates, and it comes in the front of the knee, and that's why the knee looks swollen in the front, but it also escapes into the back of the knee through torn tissue to create a Baker cyst, and it gets trapped in the back of the knee. And so when you're looking at the outside of the knee, when you're not looking through the skin, it just looks as, as a big lump, and lumps and bumps that appear in your later ages are always concerning, but it's important to know that this bump is not a tumor, it's not a cancer, it's not a collection of cells, it's nothing dangerous. It's uncomfortable, it's a collection of fluid, but it's nothing dangerous or tumorous. And the symptoms of a Baker cyst are what you would expect. This can be uncomfortable. Some people will describe it as pain, but it's mostly described as being uncomfortable in the back of the knee. There's a sensation of pressure and that can lead to a fullness, tightness, and a stiffness. So how do we treat it? Well, there, there aren't a lot of treatments for a Baker cyst, it turns out, because again, it is a collection of fluid that has escaped to the back of the knee. So as long as the knee is ge generating fluid, the Baker cyst will recur. So if it gets drained or it gets empty, as soon as the knee starts grinding again, it will often recur. The question then is what happens to a Baker cyst after total knee replacement? And these authors set out to study that. And this study was published in 2016. And and the hypothesis was relatively straightforward. So for, since the 1950s and 1960s, orthopedists were told, were meant to believe that once a knee, a patient had knee surgery, the Baker cyst would disappear. So for the past 50 to 60 years, we thought if a patient had surgery, the Baker cyst would disappear. So the authors set to study that question. Okay. And so again, what they did is they looked at a 102 patients with Baker cysts who are scheduled to have knee replacement. So all these patients who are going to have knee replacement had an MRI prior. And here, and when we look at an MRI, we can see the femur, we can see the tibia, this is the front of the knee, this is muscle. This gray sac in the back is that Baker cyst. This is all fluid that is accumulated from this joint grinding. So all patients prior knee surgery had an MRI confirming that they had a Baker cyst. And then they had a secondary study, an ultrasound to confirm the size and the volume of the Baker cyst. And their hypothesis at the beginning of the study was that this cyst would disappear after knee replacement. This cyst would be gone. So let's see what they found. So it's important to look at their findings in two different perspectives. One is structural. What happens to the collection of fluid and two symptomatic? Does the patient feel or is the patient bothered by that collection of fluid? So let's take a look at the structural. So before surgery, all 102 patients had image-confirmed evidence of a Baker cyst. And afterwards, 87 of these 100 still had evidence of a Baker cyst. There was still a collection of fluid in the back of the knee. Now, the ultrasound showed that it was smaller than prior to surgery, but it, that collection of fluid reaccumulated. It didn't go away. And only 15, so that's about 15% of patients, did it resolve completely. So the vast majority of patients still had a structural Baker cyst after surgery. And there was also improvement symptomatically, but less dramatic. So all 102 patients had Baker cysts prior to surgery. But interestingly, only about three quarters knew they had a Baker cyst. And after surgery, only a third. So only about 32 out of 102 patients had any symptoms of a Baker cyst. The vast majority, the other 70 patients didn't feel or were not aware that they had anything in the back of their knee. So it, even though it doesn't go away, it becomes substantially less symptomatic in the majority of patients. 
So again, let's go to their conclusions. Again, remember their hypothesis in the study was very simple, that it would go away after total replacement. But they found after one year, number one, structurally, a Baker cyst was still present in 87 patients or 85%. However, number two, symptomatically, there was a significant reduction in symptoms from the Baker cyst before 71% to after 31%. So again, in conclusion, it, didn't, it only resolved in a small number. Um, and symptoms from the cyst persisted in about a third of the patients. So again, in conclusion, it's important to know that the Baker cyst is nothing dangerous. Uh, it always looks concerning from the skin, from the outside when you're looking at the back of the knee, but it's just a collection of fluid. It is always drained at the time of a knee replacement surgery. It is always decompressed, but it often reaccumulates. So after one year, we can't say that it will disappear after drainage during knee replacement, but we can say that symptoms tend to be reduced afterwards. So. A Baker cyst is a collection of fluid in the back of the knee. There aren't a lot of surgical treatments specifically for Baker cyst. A Baker cyst is drained. It is decompressed at the time of surgery. So during a knee replacement, that sac of fluid is completely drained. But it is not unusual for fluid to reaccumulate into the back of the knee after surgery. And the majority of patients will have some structural evidence of a Baker cyst if they had an ultrasound or an MRI. However, the majority of these patients, the symptoms will be substantially reduced. Okay, it's important to know that ahead of time, with your eyes wide open, talk to your doctor about your Baker cyst if you have any further questions. Thank you.